God, who by the passion of Christ, your Son, our Lord, abolished the death inherited from ancient sin, by every succeeding generation, grant that just as being conformed to him, we have borne by the law of nature the image of the man of earth, so by the sanctification of grace we may bear the image of the man of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the man who was the gatekeeper said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made, because it was cold, and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world I have always taught, in the synagogue or in the tent area where all the Jews gather, and in secret I have said nothing. Why ask him? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you struggle? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of one of those whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order not to, do, not to be defiled, so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, would we not have handed him over to you? At this Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone in order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king, for this was I born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one priest.
prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out to him, not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And he said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid, and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you, and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold, your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece, from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be. 
in order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the Spirit. Now since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, They will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus, and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a tomb, in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there, because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear people, we are blessed to be able to be together this 
afternoon to celebrate the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and to be with each other on this Good Friday. I would like to assure you that our prayers are with you and we remember you daily in our prayers here at St. Mark's. To be with each other during these days of the Holy Week is a great blessing for all of us to have the opportunity to walk with each other through the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah, the prophet in the Old Testament, reminds us in the first reading of his faithfulness to God but also the faithfulness of the suffering servant. An image of our Savior, Jesus Christ. During Good Friday, it's probably a little easier for us to recall in our lives those moments of suffering those moments of pain, and when we think of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we can also think of those moments that God came into our lives and helped us, answered our prayers, made His presence felt, gave us the opportunity to unite ourselves with Him in our efforts to overcome the difficulties that we have encountered. We see that example in today's passion, that Jesus was faithful to the Father all the way through this difficult time in his life. Nevertheless, he was willing to give his life for the salvation of all, to suffer many things during this passion, this walk towards Calvary. I know that there are many people experiencing different kinds of suffering and deprivation in our world today. Not only in the greater world, but in our immediate name and in our immediate vicinity and locality. Because of this coronavirus, all of us are in touch with what is needed in our lives. But I suggest to you today that what is needed in our lives is to renew our faith that presence of God that dwells within each one of us. That presence of God that comes to us through life, life in the Spirit, and life given to us physically by our parents. To get in touch with that life of God within us once again can be a real gift that we receive during these days. To reflect on the prayers that we have just heard this Good Friday, to reread the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, to spend time in prayer and reflection, to acknowledge the blessings that God has given to each one of us, look around us and see the support that we receive from family and friends. And to remind ourselves on this day that we continue to be in that part of land that ends with the resurrection on Easter Sunday. But we are still called to remember about abstaining and doing penance and praying. 
So, my dear people, I hope and pray that today's service of the Passion of Christ, the communion, and of petitions for our world will bring us into that spirit of uniting ourselves with that presence of God that dwells within each one of us. Let us kneel. 
increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens that we born in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, in whose hand 
lives every human heart and the rights of peoples. Look with faith, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, the freedom of religion may, through your gift, be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm. Let us pray to the beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may bless the world of all error, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loose in fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, help to the sin, and salvation.
dear people who are present here, those at home, I invite you now to join with me and pray the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power of the Lord, and the Lord, and the Lord. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring you to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body, and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, who served in us the work of your majesty, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, 
descend upon your feet. Love honor the death of your Son and the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ, Savior of all people, grant that sorrows should come. 